Working with rectangular arrays in three dimensions requires a little bit of extra thinking and planning on your part so you can really take advantage of the features and functionalities. In this particular example, we have a cantilevered front face of a building where we're going to array some balconies. So if we look at the existing UCS, which is our normal world coordinate system, we would see that normally rows and columns of a rectangular array would be along the X and Y, which is clearly not what we want to happen here. We want them to array up and down along the building. So before we begin this, we're going to orient our UCS in a way that will make it easier for us to work with this. So what we want to do is bring the Y axis up and spinning it around the X. So I'll do this and bring that up by 90 degrees. So I now have my X and Y system planar to the front of the building, but note that it is not cantilevered and we'll look at that in just a moment. Now we go up to the ribbon, select our rectangular array and select the balcony objects that we'll actually be forming the array with. And we can see now that as we rough in the array, it's moving in the directions we want, but we see that it's actually cutting up through the building as a result of the cantilever. So what we can go ahead and do is just rough it in by accepting defaults and leave it there. And we'll go ahead and use editing to go ahead and get our final functionality in there. Now, if you're doing this like a building design, you probably already have your distances and everything computed. And in fact, we've done so here. So we're going to be using eight columns, evenly spaced at 31 feet. We'll have nine rows, evenly spaced at nine feet. And we can actually see this changing as we do this. Now the problem is we want to make these balconies come out. So notice that the positive Z direction is outward and that is going to denote what we call level behavior. So we're only going to have one level, but the difference is, is that we want that level to skew out forward following the cantilevered edge of this. So what we actually want to do is click down here and apply an elevation offset to our rows. Now we've gone ahead and computed the slope of this wall so we know that it will be a two foot six value in order to compute that correctly and bring it up. Now you may ask, why did I not place the X and Y coordinate system on the front cantilevered face of the building? The reason is that I had to maintain that nine feet spacing nominal from floor to floor. So it was important that I was able to hold a dimension along that Y axis. So this is a good example of using a little bit of UCS knowledge to plan and be able to crank out an associative array that will not only get everything in rows and columns, but will be able to manipulate in the Z direction as well. And the obvious benefit to doing it this way will be that if we need to come back and edit something about our patio to change the railing or the materials or anything like that, we'll be able to edit the source object and be able to reform the entire associative array in one shot. So there you have it, row, column, level, and row offset behavior, 3D rectangular arrays.